This is QFS Transportation Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruise Chevrolet on ABC News 4. Yeah, well, good evening and welcome to a special Friday night. Natalie Spala is here and we get to not only talk about high school football, but college football as well. Clemson in action. More on that in a bit. Yes, but first let's talk preps and what a premier matchup we get on TV tonight. In all likelihood, the winner of this one wins the Region 8-3A championship. We've got Oceanside and Hanahan. Yeah, both are 2-0 in the region. Both are red hot. Hanahan winning five straight coming in. Oceanside took last year's meeting 16-7. As close as can be on paper, but not on paper on the field. <laughs> Not as much to Wiley Knight Stadium for this one, and what a night for the Oceanside Land Sharks. Oceanside quarterback Colby Shirey with over 100 yards rushing in the first half alone. Those are nine of them. Touchdown on the keeper. It's seven nothing. More Oceanside. More Shirey. He keeps again. Scores again. 14 nothing. Land Sharks. Then he will go to the air. How about Cole Strickler catching this one? 21 yards and a touchdown. It's 21 nothing Oceanside before you can even blink. And then we're going to make that 28 nothing Oceanside with this play. The Land Sharks force a Hanahan fumble. Carson Arnold picks it up and he is rumbling 46 yards for the touchdown. He's got an offer from the Citadel. That certainly shows why Hanahan finally gets on the board with this pass play. Chris Espinosa to Braden Joseph, but all Oceanside. All Oceanside tonight. Vaughn Blue with a rushing touchdown and Oceanside rolls. They should win the region. Oceanside wins this game for sure. 42 to 7. Yeah, I tell you, um, we challenged these guys all week to be physical. We had to be able to run the ball and be able to stop the run, and we did that. Uh, Vaughn Blue had a fantastic night running the ball behind a great offensive line. Can't say, much, can't say enough about our defense. And went out there and just uh, shut out one of the best running teams uh, in the entire state of South Carolina. Our defense stepped up tonight. Good for them. A showdown tonight in Berkeley County. Goose Creek is one of the best four and three teams in the state. Hanging with Fort Dorchester right down to the final play last week. But Kane Bay, six and one, just so impressive. Got to think the region has decided here. Goose Creek has won the past two meetings. So we head up to Somerville for this one. Both teams getting pumped up, ready to rumble, but would be a rough start for Kane Bay. Down 28-6 at the half, beginning of the third quarter. If they can find anything, Goose Creek's Chris Russell Holmes throws down Jabari Green. Grant that forces a Kane Bay punt, but Kane Bay would recover with this 20 yard touchdown from Jalen Boudreau. This guy is a track star. Now 28 13 at the beginning of the fourth. I mean, Boudreau is like the fastest guy in the state of South Carolina on the track. And the Kane Bay defense would also add on to the momentum with a great tackle. Cameron Avery on third down, but looks like a comeback could be in the works, but it would quickly end. Next possession, Kavarion Brown would take down Jabari Grant in the backfield forces a punt and Goose Creek capitalizes with a 30 yard field goal from Zach Drake. Goose Creek goes up 31 13. Goose Creek wins this one 38 13 over Kane Bay. Congratulations to the Gators. Switching over to Berkeley, they're visiting Ashley Ridge. The Swamp Fox is looking for a better showing tonight after losing big to West Ashley last Friday. But Berkeley's DeMonte Gaylor breaks off for a nice run to get Berkeley's offense going. But later on, a bad snap by Berkeley causes the fumble. Christian Gaylord of the Swamp Fox is there to scoop up the loose ball for Ashley Ridge. You know what they say, good defense leads to better offense. Cordell Gaston runs up the middle all the way to the house for the score. Ashley Ridge, they strike first, going up 7-0 into the half. Final score, low scoring game, but still a win, 14-0 for Ashley Ridge. All right, Stratford at Wando, and there is Denny McDaniel. He, he's got to like this defensive stand for his team. In the first quarter, Wando fourth and goal inside the one-yard line. Stratford holds. They take over. But here's the issue with this one, Natalie. You, you don't want to do this. On the first play, the quarterback Ooh. trips over the feet of his center, and it's a safety. Wando goes up 2-0 on the Knights. Ensuing kickoff. 
Gabe Major feels it. Gabe Major turns on the Jets, and Gabe Major turns off. He's gone. That's a touchdown. Wando, 9 nothing quickly in the lead, but Stratford methodically drives down, scores on this plunge by Markel Holman, and Denny McDaniel goes to the bag of tricks. Two-point conversion. The line sets up to the side. It's a direct snap to the tight end. Brett Mars for the two. Stratford would block a field goal at the buzzer to win. 24-22 is the final score. It's a great game right there. Well, almost not fair for Saul to have to play games like this against Fort Dorchester, but it comes with the territory after they chose to move up to 5A a few years back. But there is one thing we've learned about this team and the Warriors over the years. They don't quit. They don't back down from a challenge. Well, tonight's challenge, Steve LaPrade's Patriots at District 4 Stadium, and they got to work early first quarter. Quarterback Zoltan Osborne, he's got time. He's also got someone on his team ready to make a big play. Here's Marion Mitchell back of the end zone. Touchdown Fort D, 20-yard reception for Mitchell and the Patriots. They strike first. We'll stall offense coming up with nothing. Fort with the ball again and threatening Osborne again. This time he finds Michael Smalls, makes a guy miss. Looks like it's off to the races until being pushed out of bounds. Nice run, though. Gets the Patriots to the stall 27-yard line. Next play, Osborne lets it fly. Caught by Demetrius McKelvey. Dude comes from pretty much out of nowhere to make the catch, but check out this athleticism here. Snaking through defenders, simply refuses to go down. 27-yard catch and run for the senior. Puts his team up 14-0 with the made extra point. Final tonight, 58 nothing in favor of the Patriots. All right, let's head down to Waltboro, James Island at Colleton County tonight. Not a ton of offense in the first half of this one. It is a defensive struggle. Nice play by the Cougars defensive back, Narquez Fields, batting down a potential touchdown pass from Braxton Scott, but the Trojans push on. Running back Amore Scott rushes forward for a few yards, and that would set up a QB keeper for Braxton Scott. A lot of Scots here. I'm Scott. They're <laughs> Scott. You're not Scott, not but Scott. all good. I'm going to go wipe my face with Scott towels. <laughs> Whatever. James Island goes up 6 nothing right there. James Island wins this one 20-3, the final. We're going to go to commercial. I'm going to run back, and we're going to edit West Ashley Somerville highlights. Crazy game in West Crazy Ashley tonight. Game. All right, we'll see you right after the break. <laughs> Bye, Scott. for you. Lights out on highways across the low country. There's over 70 lights out in that area. To keep you safe. It's an issue that we've been reporting on since August of 2020. The problem hasn't gotten better. In fact, it may be worse. We went to SCDOT to find answers. It's typically packaged in with another bigger project to encompass it all at once. ABC News 4 is working for you to keep you safe. Easy peasy, I'm back. <laughs> is it easy peasy or easy peasy? Easy peasy, right, definitely, sorry, but that's, that's what okay. the kids say. Take sorry. a breath. We're, we're, no, we're, we're good. <laughs> I, I actually didn't miss say that. I didn't know what the kids say no, these days. No, you're good. No, you're good. Okay. Just, he's been back and forth trying to get this done, so. We're good, right? We appreciate the hustle, money Scott. In the, well, if it gets on the air, we're money in the bank. <laughs> the good news, well, he got the news early. John Canty got the call on Monday morning, Battery Creek with a positive COVID-19 case. They couldn't play the game tonight at Bishop England. Exactly. And the bad news, Canty needed a game tonight. It's homecoming at BE, and of course, you can't ruin homecoming. Everyone know. knows that. So to the rescue comes the Low Country's newest varsity program, Lucy Beckham High. Well, over to Daniel Island, where, yes, it was homecoming, but also a pink out in line with October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we are going to start things wrapping up the first half. BE led by just three. It's fourth down midfield quarterback Elliot Sanders short pass but check out that hit Lucy Beckham's Owen Davies says not gonna happen turnover on downs and we're going the other way well here come the Bengals quarterback Jimmy Webb working against the clock swings one over the middle great look but better D of course that one's broken up by Andrew Taz now it's fourth down for Lucy Beckham around the 25 hoping to tie it up with this field goal it's going to be wide left and no good BE up three nothing going into the half Battle of the defenses tonight, and it was a 
insane one. BE goes on to win 17-16, but two overtimes it took them to get to that point. Yeah, no doubt about it. Huge region game, also a huge barometer game for the Philip Simmons Iron Horses tonight. They are so much improved. A 6-1 and record coming in, but Woodland's a team that holds cards in that region. The Wolverines beating the Iron Horses 49-13 last year, so we see actually how improved Philip Simmons is tonight. So let's head out to St. George, and it's senior night at Woodland as they host Philip Simmons. Iron Horse is already up 40 to 6. Start the second half with a long run by Sherrod Williams. And look at him go trucking. Wow. 47 to 6. Philip Simmons on top. Wolverines D making some moves. Linebacker Toby Troutman strips the ball for the Iron Horses running back and he recovers. This is impressive. Sets up Jaden Gardner for the nice TD run, followed up by a two point conversion. But 47 14, Philip Simmons, 54 14, I should say, they win. They were up 47 14. Now it's 54 14 at the end of the game. 7 and 1 for Philip Simmons. Somerville at West Ashley tonight. We got these highlights on for you. There's Donnie <laughs> Kiefer and the guys. A little dump off pass right there to Jaleel Porter. He's in for the touchdown. West Ashley on top. Then it's Zaquan Smith with a touchdown for West Ashley. Huge thanks to O-line coach Hugh Hood for getting us those highlights late on Twitter. Somerville defense shows up. They don't allow a point in the second half, but what a win for West Ashley tonight. This is a statement win. 35-12. Guys in the neighborhood, don't toilet paper any trees do anything <laughs> crazy but that's a heck of a win in West Ashley well the Timberland Wolves one of the only few remaining undefeated squads left and they've got a long trip out to Santee tonight so we're going to take a look at some of the scores yeah, bad news first. there they didn't call in the score you keep talking that's I'm going to look okay. up that score look up the score right now because we've got another game to talk about and that was Baptist Hill at Buthen Bowman and as you can see, a big night for Baptist Hill. They got things going, and Bowman, I guess, did not. 56-0, the final there. Uh, other than Do we that, got, uh, nope, we don't have it. We they don't did, have they it. didn't call in Timberland. If you get a score, uh, just let give us, us a buzz. Let us know. We'll get it on before the end of the show. I did leave the opening there for that, but unfortunately. That score was not called in. All good. We were, All good. We were, our minds were in the right spot. Marion Brown did text in the score for Baptist Hill. Shout out to them, then. Well, what are you going to do? Moving on tonight. Skiza action tonight. Lawrence Manning at Pinewood Prep, and it's a Pinewood Prep pink out. Look at that. Four minutes left in the first quarter. Pinewood up 7-0. Lawrence Manning's Bryson Smith gets stopped short of the goal line, but gets help from the rest of the team. Barrels into that end zone, and we're now tied up at seven apiece. Well, Lawrence Manning would keep rolling. Up 14-7 in the second quarter. Running back Nolan Austin finds Pater from 10 yards out. Extends that lead to 21-7. Pinewood trying to make something happen, but they just didn't. James Olden sacks Asa Windham just inches in front of the end zone. Lawrence Manning would capitalize as Jackson Brown finds the end zone for the team's third rushing touchdown of the half. And it'll be 28-7. Lawrence Manning at halftime. Your final score, they'd make it close. 35-21, Lawrence Manning. All right, let's go up to Columbia. Porter Goud at Cardinal Newman for this one. Cyclones already a 14-7 lead. Marshall Pritchett passes to Freeman Barber. Barber will go through the crowd and passes the line. It's a touchdown. 21-7 Cyclones on top. Then Cardinal still got some fight in them. Duncan Skeen launches to John Himes. He misses the tackles and rushes it in for the Cardinals. They have 14, but the Cyclones are not done yet. Pritchett to Barber again. Almost a repeat from before. Barber tackled it in the end zone. That scores. 28-14. Nice win for Porter Gout on the road tonight. Good trip home down I-26. Northwood at Hilton Head Prep. Dolphins already led this one 7-6 in the first, and they had every intention on adding to that one-point lead. Second possession, Lonsal Daly takes the pitch. No one going to catch him. End zone bound, and Hilton Head Prep leads 14-6. Well, Hilton Head Prep was just getting started. Second quarter now, and it's going to be quarterback Tristan Bono Bonomo. I like that. Bonomo working his magic, tries to find someone downfield to throw to. You could have North called him Christian or Tristan Houdini. There you go. Or David Blaine. Absolute magic. Not going to find anyone, so hey, just take it yourself. 
goes all the way, escapes the nice run into Northwood territory. Well, a few plays later, Daly finishes things off with a nice touchdown run himself. Hilton Head was starting to pull away up 21-6 at this point, and they would go on to this one, win this one in a big way, 62-6, the final score. All right, well, the Clemson game way too close for comfort. A couple of screams in our newsroom tonight. <laughs> we'll have those highlights for you coming up right after the break.